It's a magical moment. We're done planting beans. Yep, we are done. Uh, finished on the 14th. Did replant yesterday the 15th. Had 14 acres to replant. So we got two inches of rain at the field right after I planted them. So that did no good, or two inches plus. And it wasn't dry when I planted. Brad was um, making a lot out of a, a wet mess. So it's always planting with two plus two, which I was planting with two plus two. But uh, for the replant, I put them on the 10 because I haven't had time yet to adjust the tire width. And the two plus two's tires are set in narrower, so the this row was half being planted in the tire track. That's not the case at the 10. Uh, we set this planter up for the 10, because a couple years ago we changed spacing a little bit um, to make sure it tightly fit, and we moved these rows closer to the tire track. So yes, planting is done. We take the planter off, and next, I'm gonna put the sprayer on and get back to spraying corn. <laughs> yeah, not quite the way I wanted corn spraying to go. I was hoping corn spraying would have happened shortly after uh, the corn was planted. We use a bit more of a pre-emergent approach on corn. But that didn't happen, obviously, because the corn's out of the ground. And in fact, I wanna make a video showing you um, one of the chemicals in the corn herbicide. It's actually a three-way mix. Uh, but I should explain that more in a different video when I'm actually looking at the corn. Or when I'm spraying. This is not about that yet. Right now we're just wrapping up taking the bean planter off. Which is so nice, because yet again I want to point out the lovely jack stands we put on. But we, well, I guess Dad and I put them on. I did a bunch of hole drilling. He was holding stuff. Didn't drill a hole in anybody's hand. Oh, of course, that's too long to come out nicely. This top link I happened to find at a farm sale. I think it's a top link for maybe a Deutz. Dad thinks it is an adjuster for a bush hog for the wheels. Okay, pins pulled. Slide everybody off. This should be really... There we go. Yeah, that settles a little bit. Check transmission fluid. Well, we are above the full line. So I guess uh, that's good and ready to go. Um, we have to put the drawbar in because of this little buster bar down here to help level things out one last time before we plan. So before I pull anything off the drawbar, we got to stretch that out. That's hidden way underneath. And yeah, these pins we can leave here. Might probably won't hook up to the planer again, but we'll just leave that top link with the planer since it's half set. Sort of. I adjusted it to get it off. There's not a rag here. There's a rag right here. They only had about 14 acres to replant on the corn. Replanted 40 acres. 14 acres of beans, replanted 40 acres of corn, did not get any video of that, that wasn't fun. We don't make this tight, this wasn't me. Oh well, you know what it means when it's tight? It didn't fall out. So yeah, we got a next video, or a coming video, we're gonna show off the sprayer. We're spraying with the 1086 now. That is a delightful thing. I mean, it's overkill. However, just when the sprayer is full, um, if anybody watched the video last year of spraying, we have a three-point sprayer. And when the sprayer is full, oh, I need two minutes. When the sprayer is full, oh, well, there's a little bit of weight throwing you around. And the 66 was fine for spraying. Uh, but the uh, it's nice to sit in the shade, you know. The cab may not be fully functional, but the shade is half the battle. So we like the shade. 
And then you feel like you have more control, because I farm, I don't know, a couple, well, one good hillside area, which that's where I knifed anhydrous this year, or you saw that on video. And it's, it's nice just to have a bigger tractor so it's, the sprayer's not pushing you around. And the, the plan is, now that we've ran it a little bit, we'll set the, the pump up on the 1000 PTO and run a lower RPM. Okay, so tractor's ready for other things. We'll catch you guys the next go round. Um, most likely spraying, yes, said that already. So, happy farming. Um, it's been fun. And uh, we'll see you next time. Yeah, eat that Johnson grass. I gotta do clean up spraying around the barns, and you're doing your part keeping it clean there, bud. Good job. Well, hello, Bane Farm fans. Uh, we're out here spraying that corn we talked about. It's better to look forward so you can see the rows. Um, it's not the calmness. There's a little bit to wiggle the leaves. Uh, but we're spraying on a, we'll say a low volatility uh, chemical with uh, a high rate of water. So we're not just straight fogging it out. Uh, going about four miles an hour. Um, guess trying not to bounce across the field too fast. We've got the sprayer. I'm back to 1086. Just gotta watch our rows. And right now I'm in the replant corn. That corn took, did well the first time. That corn up the slope did well the first time. All this got drowned out, and even then some of the replant over by the trees got dug out by raccoons. Uh, so anybody else wanna wanna you know kick me while I'm down? I hate raccoons. Um, so if anybody, well, that's a little gusty at the moment. This view down the field is abysmal, and it looks like, I don't know, it keeps trying to rain on me, so there'll be a, a little gust, and it goes back to being fairly low wind, except for right now, because there's a cloud right there that's getting dark. They have finished planting, or doing the replant in a slight sprinkle. So yes, let's take a look. Uh, actually, I'll show this off when we're not driving around, um, how much nicer it is in the 10 because we have mounted the controller right here aiming for about 30 pounds of pressure we even have a little valve to give us the agitator to control that well that was an iron worm that was tire worm taking out some corn there and for some reason i didn't get these rows the straightest along the trees see along the trees raccoons i hate raccoons i finally figured out it was raccoons first year it happened, I, I thought it was turkeys or crows or something, but this year it was so wet at one point that I saw their paw prints and they were going and digging down the row. I'm like, you little turd monkeys. So yes, I have a, a higher, or an increased personal vendetta against raccoons because we get them in the sweet corn, and now this, and I try to get my chickens, they're vile little creatures, and if I ever build an ark, um, they will not be on it. Now we're far enough out in the middle of the field, they've mostly stopped out here, but the first three passes, I'm like, well, shoot, there's two acres of corn along the woods I lost. Oh. That's why farmers have hope, right? Hope for next year, hope for 2020. Going into this year, the number, 2019, just sound like a terrible number. It's not even, it's not even, that might be prime, but a lot of prime numbers are very odd. Ah, huh, get it? Odd prime number. Most of your prime numbers are odd. Let's not to get all mathy on us. Ooh, yeah. Good thing we got some broad leaves down here, just some common rag. That'll die easily. That grassy patch there in the middle is where it's typically wet over here. That will be, uh, well, exciting. Corn, you got a lot of fertilizer out here. When I replanted, I did uh, about half rate-ish on the starter fertilizer. Okay, let's turn. 
Now, as we can see here a little bit, we see a few things starting to die. This got sprayed. <laughs> the corn is invisible because of the raccoons. You can jump off and see. But if you look down the row and you see where it's kind of worked up, let's jump off real quick. Right here, you see how it's worked up right down the row? And they didn't eat the plant, they're digging for the kernel. Kernel, kernel, kernel. And maybe they pulled the plant to get to the kernel, but finally maybe they're getting too big that the kernel has fallen apart. So yes, if anybody knows any raccoons, um, don't tell me you're catching and releasing. They're catching and get removed from existence. So yes, probably these are dying. And uh, the grasses look affected right now. This is a few days out. Side note, uh, yeah, although it's uh, no plant, um, no shave, no plant right now, um, we're past that, it should take care of this. Well, we still got plenty of stuff to do. So, we're here spraying. Um, this is a quick little tidbit. Twice today, twice, count them, one, two, I've ran out of spray exactly at the headlands. Not out in the middle of the field. I come to the end of the rows. And I'm about to shut it off, and I always watch the fan pattern collapse, like we're out of spray. It's perfect. It's really been, that's been good. While we're here, um, in the tractor, we'll show this off. Uh, the favorite part of spraying in a cab tractor now. We've got the controller. No electronics to go bad. All mechanical right here, as long as we don't have 
shoulder problems. You just kind of reach behind us, reach over, turn a little bit. Um, you know, like the newer tractors have their whole command console right here. Well, this is just kind of off to the right side and a little behind us with a gauge. Uh, nothing's running right now because we're out of juice. We have a pressure control valve that goes down to the, has an agitator in it. So we can control how much is going to the agitator and regulate our pressure um, at the ball valve. That way we're aiming for 30 pounds uh, to get our 20 gallons an acre uh, at, a, at about four miles an hour or so. So the sprayer's got a yellow tank, the booms are green, and uh, we spray about 36 foot at a time, three passes of the corn planter. It is, it's, a, it's a simple setup. Typically, the controller would be mounted right there where I'm pointing that red thing. Uh, but we decided to put it on the tractor, and when we're done, ooh, it'll slide right out. I'm not going to slide it out. And we made it not permanent, so we can take those clamps loose and that tubing out, and we can put the controller on a different tractor, like if we want to spray with the 14 or the 2 plus 2, because we're crazy. Yeah, yeah. 2 plus 2. We had, if, by that point, we'd have to get saddle tanks to make it worthwhile to spray with the 2 plus 2. And we got the pump running off the 1,000 RPM down there. Don't know if you can see that. Uh, might as well get out because i got to fold the booms up. But we'll, uh, we'll take it close to the road where the corn short is some tall corn. Spraying a little different than we were for the uh, that shorter corn. Um, I guess we'll go back and reload, and I'll show you the chemicals we're using on the shorter corn. Oh, well, it's going well today. The rain's missing us, but we could, for once, for once, go for a gentle shower. Yes, sprayer. It's on the 1,000 RPM with an adapter. We're running, a, we're running low speed, about uh, 1,500. Pumps max is 750, so as long as we don't run full RPM on the engine, uh, we'll kind of stay at the upper limits. 200 gallon tank gets us about 10 acres. Uh, the short corn, we've been spraying a chemical called Trizar. Metachlor, Atrazine, Atrazine related compounds, and Mesotrione. Uh, this is limited by the combination in the mesotrione for the replant corn uh, because the replant corn is shorter and 12 inches or less it's it's maxing out on the 12 inches whereas the taller corn that wasn't replanted uh yeah we can't they suggest not to spray this so we were just doing a more you know, oh, a little basic more basic mix just some atrazine and i forget what else is in with the atrazine that we're spraying. I just happen to have a jug for the Trizar right here. Whew, time to refill, the fun part. Turn on the hose and hope the water comes out. Now, my favorite part, I got to make this another video. Oh, hey, the water's working. Last time I fought and fought and fought to get the water to come out. Yeah, so in another video, we're gonna make a video of a field at home, I'm not at home, about this Trizar mix. That, uh, actually doing a really good job, better than I expected, uh, especially on some grasses. And I think it's the mix uh, of everything, especially the mesotrione added to it, that's affecting grass which in corn, it's hard to kill grass. Keep in mind, this is non-GMO corn, so I can't go out there and spray Roundup. That would be a very bad idea. A very bad idea. So I'm gonna make a video on that, um, just how, how well it's uh, doing its job of killing things. Uh, but that's in a field we sprayed earlier on shorter corn at home. Now, typically the atrazine, the metachlor, and the mesotrione are suggested more for pre-emergent or slightly post-emergent uh, while well, we push the slightly on the shorter corn uh, but we, we couldn't get our typical mix a um, little side note our say preferred and uh, you know we use this 
uh, business every year, uh, shut down their agronomy. Well, he pretty much shut down the whole business. He wanted to retire. He had a great gig going. So he ran a feed mill, sprayed, and up until about, hmm, let's say eight, at least five years ago, maybe eight, stopped buying grain. He was buying grain. He had a nice little operation. Uh, but he decided it was a lot of work to look after and nobody wanted to buy the business. He tried to sell it to me. I did not go after that. Ooh, yeah, I did. That would be a lot to look after. All the chemicals, seed, running the feed mill. So yes, that lovely side note. So he was always good about getting a spray and now the, the new company that we decided to go with couldn't get the same formulation we had used in years past. Uh, Volley and atrazine, and volley is already has some atrazine in it. So we're using a lot of atrazine pre-plant. We're trying to, but this year went totally awry. <sighs> oh, well, getting ready to put chemicals in. I'll put those in. We'll head back to the field. We are back in the field. This will be the last load of the day. Hopefully this load of spray finishes this field. And you can see how wet it was because some of the corn is a little wavy. Yes, it's it's been wet. It's been wet. Oh. Like I said, we could we got a, a little shower, it'd be okay. So from back out here, this is taller corn. This corn was planted uh, I don't know, June 4th and roughly ish going fine. Uh, we, we made our knee high by 4th of July. And it's it's fairly clean. Every once in a while in the, in the damper portions there's more grass. And every once in a while there's a little section with some broadleaf stuff. But most of the broad leaves are still really small so that is fantastic. Uh, the corn will shade them out in addition to the spray helping uh, kill them off. Coming to the part I hate. I hate making turns at the end of the field. It's just a pain in the butt. Oh, because I gotta count rows and I'm not good at counting rows. So we're coming to the end. We flip our lever, pick four rows, and look back and struggle to count that we came out there. We sprayed these four, we're gonna skip four, and then we're gonna be driving in a headland. So hopefully we can go back our headland pass. We sprayed these four. We need to spray four to come out right here. So we drove here. Yeah, look at how much fun this is. Ah, ah. I love spraying before the corn's out of the ground. We're gonna see some crossroads and I believe head down right here. I believe. Oh. And if not, well, then we might have missed a row or two. Can I already tell you now we're a row off. And I don't know which way. It's a good thing the weeds are nice and small out here in this section. I think we're a row too far that way. I love at the end of the rows when, and of course I planted this and I'm super anal about keeping everything straight. But sometimes, and I, yeah, I mean, it's usually not me, or unless I'm in a rush. The rows at the very end might have a little whip to them, because we're making the turn and not fully out of the, making the turn big enough, because we're in a rush. Oh uh, yeah, our ground speed's a little fast, pressure was a little high. That they got a little whip to the end, and that helps me count off sets of four rows. So I think we're one too far this way. Now the good news is the end nozzles run half rate to make sure we get full coverage. So the one stops middle of the road, the other one stops middle on the very edge. So there's gonna be a little bit of a weak spot going over there. Now the question is, do I overlap a row next time? Or do I just keep continuously being one row off, of which we won't notice except for right over in there. That's right, so 
nice when this is small doing more pre-emergent spray. I can see my tire tracks and know where to go. It's very hard to tell that there were tire tracks out here, you know, just from planting in tilled soil. Oh, here we go. Swing and off. We can easily see where we drove before. The throttle back and count. We sprayed that one. One, two, three, four we sprayed. We skipped these four. So then we head right here to put our tire track. And if you guys can make better heads and tails than this than I could, well, you can see a whole lot more on the camera than I expected. Well, we're gonna keep going, keep spraying. It's gonna get dark on us. It's the calmest it's been all day. Uh, I'm pretty sure this stuff won't have any issues with um, inversions. Um, just kind of thinking the clouds and the slightly potentially stormy weather would keep a, a little breeze going right now, but it seems like it's always good for be very calm right before dusk. So we're going to cover these last uh, seven acres in this field. This was about almost ten here. I already sprayed the headlands. This was a damp portion based on that grass that likes it wet. And now someone's going to ask why, you know, is it tiled, is it not? I don't know. It's rented ground. And there's only so much I can convince the landowner of and only so long of a contract I can pin them down to to feel comfortable putting forth the cost of tiling. Which most years is not an issue. But this year, uh, obviously it has been because we're a foot of rain plus ahead. I don't care how much tile you have, that's, that's going to take effect after a while. If we just happen to have two, three inches and I'm delayed planting a week, woo. Delayed planting a month or more because it rains an inch every other day on average. You, just, you can't get out there unless you've got sand, I'm sorry. I hope I sprayed that patch of weeds good the first time. Oh, hopefully we missed those. Ooh, we missed those branches. That's good. Well, we're going to go ahead and call it quits. We'll talk to you guys later. Happy farming, and we'll get back to you with more fun farming action later.